Welcome back to the Game Collection. I'm Super Derek, and last year for the Summer of Suikoden, I reviewed Suikoden 1, 2, and 3. If you want to see those, be sure to check them out over here somewhere. But this year, I'm going to be covering three more Suikoden series, including and starting with Suikoden 4. Shortly before the release of Suikoden 3, Yoshitaka Murayama left Konami and his name was stricken from the game credits in accordance with company policy. That's a story for another day though. Working with Murayama from the start though was Junko Kawano, who was the designer of Suikoden, Suikoden 2, and co-directed Suikoden 3. In Suikoden 4, she continued the role of designer but also wrote and produced the game. Taking on the director's seat though was Masayuki Saruta, who was previously an artist for Twin B RPG and Ganbare Goemon Uchu Kaizoku Ako Ginju. Some have credited Murayama's absence from the title with allowing Suikoden 4 to be the weakest in the series, and while his absence from the game can definitely be felt throughout the game, I would still be hard pressed to say that the game wasn't a good game. After all, the weakest game in one of the greatest series still has the potential to be better than most RPGs out there, and I feel that Suikoden 4 gets treated a bit unfairly. But I may be biased as Suikoden 4 was actually my introduction to the series years and years ago. In Suikoden 4, you play as Laszlo, a guy in Knight who just finished his training alongside his best friend, Snow Vingerhut. Shortly after their graduation ceremony, while carrying out their nightly duties, Laszlo's ship comes under attack from a crazed pirate, Brando, who bears the true rune of punishment. Due to some skill and a lot of luck, Laszlo survived the skirmish, but at a great cost. Glossing over many events, Laszlo ends up cursed with the very rune of punishment that drove Brando insane. Branded a murderer and a traitor, Laszlo is set adrift. Meanwhile, the Kuluk nations descend upon the island nation's archipelago, wreaking havoc across the sea. Throughout the game, our hero embarks on a journey to clear his name, unite the island nations, and drive off the invading Kuluk nation, all without succumbing to the power of the cursed rune of punishment. If that seems like a daunting set of tasks, it most certainly is. And while that may seem like too big of a bite to chew, the game actually paces itself really well. These events string together slowly and more or less logically to where it's easy to suspend your disbelief. The story of Suikoden 4 may in fact be one of its greatest assets. The characters were written believably. Specifically, the story of Snow as he progresses throughout the game is one that I watched unveil with great interest throughout the game. That said, not every character in the game is quite so well written, and with 108 recruitable stars of destiny, I think that's completely understandable. It bears mentioning that many of the recruitable characters are people that fill in your home base, shop owners, innkeepers, rune masters, blacksmiths, so not everyone in this game is there for the purpose of delivering complex character stories. Maybe only a third of the characters can actually be put into your party for battling, while each of the other characters act as a support member or offer various perks here and there. There's even characters that exist simply to help fill in your spare time with super addicting gambling games like dice and a Suikoden style mahjong game. Aside from collecting 108 stars, many other series traditions continue into Suikoden 4, including the recruitment of a master tactician who severely helps in turning the tide in large-scale battles, pulling victories out of the jaws of defeat with cunning tactics that keep even the player in the dark. Seeing these events unfold and helping guarantee your victory continues to feel so satisfying while keeping battles feeling suspenseful. I feel like the real importance of this small detail is that it helps these underdog stories feel more plausible, if only just slightly. Suikoden 4 also brought back the silent protagonist, which Suikoden 3 had previously bucked in favor of three protagonists with fully fleshed out personalities of their own. Suikoden 4 did buck more than its own fair share of trends though, to the chagrin of many a Suikoden fan. Suikoden 4 no longer allows the player to use six characters in a party, opting instead for a more standard feeling four character party system. Suikoden 4 also let go of the idea of a castle as a base of operations. Instead, your castle is a gigantic seafaring ship that you sail around in. 
This idea was pretty amazing, but there were a few issues with it that kept it from feeling as novel as it probably could have been. The ship sails at a snail's pace, first and foremost. And unfortunately, the ship doesn't really start out with much of a map to go by, as the map is covered by a fog of war that you slowly uncover as you make your way around the sea. This can be mitigated somewhat by recruiting a specific character, but even with the dash mode activated, you will have to contend with this game's other weak point. The enemy encounter rate at sea is far, far too frequent. And with the Suikoden leveling system making a return from all previous entries, this meant that grinding these encounters for experience points will have severely diminishing returns after the first few levels. Fortunately, once series staple Vicky enters your party, bringing with her the ability to teleport, overworld navigation becomes something you only have to contend with to make your way to a new location for the first time. All of these slight issues here and there have given the game a reputation of starting off very slowly, a reputation the game thoroughly deserves. However, once it gets going, it gets to be quite fun. Battle within the game still features combo attacks, basically dual and triple attacks from Chrono Trigger. Some of these can be quite overpowered, and some of them, mm, not so much. There are loads of excellent characters who I love to use within battle, which makes the four character party system feel especially constrictive, but I think it's hard to fault the game for having too many awesome characters to choose from. Large scale battles within Suikoden 4 are, again, completely different than any of the previous entries. In this game, large scale battles take place out upon the open seas, where the player controls a number of vessels with which the player and opponent take turns firing rune cannons at one another. The rune cannons fire shells imbued with elemental attributes, each of which have strengths and weaknesses. I love this concept, and at first battles were very fun and strategic, but eventually they lost their luster as the depth of the combat was only really skin deep. Once you figure out the trick to rune cannon battling, it's easy to ensure victory every single time. The archipelago that is the island nations doesn't feel very expansive, unfortunately. There's only a dozen or so small islands to explore, which leaves the world feeling kinda constrictive. There are a few dungeons within the game, but most of the in-game battling takes place within the towns over which the nations are skirmishing, which makes a lot of sense. But at the end of the day, what that means is a relative lack of variety in environments. Visually, Suikoden 4 is a mixed bag. I love being able to play the game in native 480p resolution or progressive scan. It really helps the details of the world, and it's not quite so fuzzy like the usual 480i output of the PlayStation 2. There's a lot of nice visual elements to the game, but most of that might feel overshadowed by the game's lackluster, early mocap animated cutscenes and battle animations. The animations end up feeling a little stiff and not really looking as impactful as hand animated cutscenes seen elsewhere. But bad mocap animations are kind of par for the course when it comes to RPGs of the era. And while we're on the subject of animation, this wouldn't be a proper review of Suikoden 4 if I didn't mention the infamous walk run animation. Essentially, the game gives the player a dash button that allows the player to move a bit more quickly, but rather than giving him a dash animation, the jog animation is just sped up a bit. It's bizarre and peculiar looking, but I think I finally figured out why they did this. In Suikoden 1, Tyr was given a walk animation, and holding the dash button sped Tyr up a bit. But the walk animation was sped up rather than giving him a run animation. I think this, in Suikoden 4, is a throwback to Suikoden 1. And while that maybe was a neat idea on paper, I have no idea how it made it past QA once they saw how silly it looked in action. Fortunately, recruiting another character speeds up the dash even further, which in turn speeds up the animation even faster, which helps it look surprisingly less hilarious. In the audio department, I enjoyed most of the voice acting within the game. It wasn't outstanding, but it wasn't offensive either. The music of Suikoden 4 contains some throwbacks to earlier Suikoden games as well, but none of the themes that played throughout the game really felt like real standouts. I actually had to go back through the soundtrack to remember what they sounded like. Once I listened to them, I recognized them and enjoyed them, but none of them really stuck with me for too long if I'm being 100% honest. Suikoden 4 overall has a pretty bad rep, but the game is actually pretty fun to play, eventually. The plot of the game is really compelling too, eventually. But it does require some upfront investment from the player that will turn off some players. And at first glance, there's not much that sets Suikoden 4 apart from any other run-of-the-mill RPG. But that doesn't mean the game is bad by any means. 
the game has some shortcomings that do squarely place it in the lower half of the Suikoden series, but I'd still recommend the game for fans of the series. Suikoden 4 also has the distinction of being the only Suikoden game that we received a direct sequel for here in the States that actually expands upon the story and original characters, but we'll talk about that next time when we cover Suikoden Tactics on the Game Collection.